Tozer. Gosh, sometimes it feels so good out here. I just probably should spend more time. You know, I might do that. I'm thinking I, I need a writing project, I think, maybe, and put together something and come out here and do it. <laughs> Which probably isn't going to happen. I do so much writing on the internet that I always say, oh, this is nice, you know, it's good to get away from a computer screen and, you know, take off the glasses and relax and talk to God and spend time with Him and just enjoy, you know, His presence, really. As I just go, ah. Have you ever done that? You just go, ah. I think... If we did, we might get more accomplished. Then again, maybe not. You know, maybe you're a gung-ho workaholic like I am, and you just gotta go and gotta go and gotta do and gotta do, and you go, 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 and do, 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 and you wind up a doo-doo. <laughs> but the beauty of what I've learned in my life is that as productive as I can be, and have been at times in my life when I'm working in a certain direction or I know a, a goal that I have freedom to just go for it and get accomplished, that when God has taken me back from that type of worldliness to ministry, then I find a different law at work, one of the spirit that takes us not necessarily through the get it done accomplish routine that you just you know press forward and go 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 you know and that might move people out of the way so that you could accomplish what you want but in the law of the spirit you know it's more about god accomplishing in us a realization of him working through us to touch other lives and to meet other people and to incorporate them as part of our family meaning that we all become collectively the body of Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been taking a look at the body of Christ and it looks pretty weird to me. But then, if I took you and I pulled you inside out, and you could see all your guts and bloods and ugh, you'd look pretty weird too, wouldn't you? Well, the body of Christ, Christendom, Christianity itself, is it as weird as you might think it might be? Because God is still in control. <laughs> he is still accomplishing his purpose. And if you sat down and ever looked at the book of Revelation and read all seven letters, if you thought about what each one of them is saying, and yet Jesus is still calling them his church, oh my God, you know, there's some pretty strange churches in there. Well, the same is true about you and me. There's some pretty strange creatures out here that we call ourselves Christian, but God has it well under control. God is all... <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what I am thinking when I come out here, I sit down and I just start talking, and then all of a sudden I open up what I'm going to read and it fits. <laughs> wow! Must be in one mind. <laughs> have the mind of Christ. Ooh, we spiritual. We bad, we bad. God is always at the controls of the universe. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Genesis 1.31 I do not know why God does some things, but I am convinced that nothing is accidental in his universe. In the creation chapters of Genesis, there is a beautiful exercise in utility. God making an orderly world for a purpose, with everything having a reason for existence. Now think about that. God made everything for a purpose, and everything has a reason for existence. If I am allowed to go into the hospital operating room, I am completely ignorant about the uses for most of the strange and complex facilities that are there, whether it be the stethoscope or the x-ray machine or thermometer or sonogram, or you name it. But the surgeon knows each one, 
And none of those instruments is there by accident. They are there for a purpose. If I could step into the cab of one of the great and powerful diesel locomotives, I would be perplexed by the many buttons and handles and bars. I would wreck the whole thing in a few minutes. But the engineer knows, and he gets the proper results when he pushes the proper switches, pulls the right buttons, or if we want to take it one step farther, it could be pretty confusing if you decided to take the side off your computer or the back and then decide to take it apart and take out the motherboard and take out the processor and take out the RAM chip and then begin to set them all aside and then put all the pieces apart and see which ones would fit where you want them to fit rather than the way they were designed. In other words, there is a purpose for why you have a computer and the way it's designed. So when God Almighty stepped into the cab of his locomotive, which we call the cosmos or the universe, he was at the controls and he has always pushed the right buttons. Everything in the universe has a purpose. There is a design. Just because there are things in the universe beyond my human explanation does not allow me to accuse God of making a lot of unnecessary truck to clutter up the universe. God made everything for some purpose. You know, it's beautiful for me to see how in science, the more that man at the end of this age, which is the end of, which is the not just the end of the age of church, but the age of man and self-determination, but that at the end of the age we've seen how science has validated how God has integrated everything interwoven together in the universe. Even as the same way that you see the DNA and the RNA all completely complex together and how it creates life or how it multiplies into life and that in some way and fashion all of the coding that was there and necessary for creating you and I or making us appear the way we are is there and God designed it that way. And so to in the universe and yet you could say well why is that there? I mean I remember when they used to say that um, you have a what do they call it? A kidney? Not a kidney, but a appendix. That the appendix didn't have a function. And then, wow, they found out it has a function. <laughs> Gosh, you know, with science changing so often, I think I could stick with God in the beginning saying there's a purpose for everything. Can't you? So as God created us, and he designed the morning, and he designed noon, and he designed night, I think that if he says, you know, to get up before dawn and spend some time with them, why not? There must be a purpose. If he says at the noonday that we should rest and be still, then why not? Maybe he has a reason. If we go in the cool of the day and we find that God is walking and talking and we want to know what he has to say, maybe there's a reason. Perhaps when we consider the stars at night and we're ready to sleep, and we see him trace his finger across the sky as though it were an asteroid going from horizon to horizon. Maybe there's a reason. But you know, for every purpose under the heavens, there is a season, there is a reason, and there is a hand that is moving and is accomplishing a purpose. And we, according to what Jesus said, can know that purpose if we would ask, if we would seek, and then we would find. Because if you ask God to speak to you, He will describe to you and tell you, though you may not understand it, His purpose for what you might be going through. Don't be waiting and satisfied or discontent because you don't know. Keep asking. For me, I did. <laughs> so, maybe you will. But Jesus himself said that you could see the Father, what he's doing, and then you too could do it too. You could go about your business accomplishing what God business in the universe. All you got to do is get up, get ready, get real, get with it, and get with him. And then he'll start talking to you and telling you what you can do to be part of his business. Wouldn't that be nice? And I'm not just giving you the business.
but God will.